In the previous lesson, we saw how we can use formatting to compare two lists to see the differences. And I'd just like to move that idea on a little bit and show you some other methods for comparing two lists of data. And this lesson is all about how we can use different types of formulas to compare two lists. And we're going to start out in this lesson by combining three different formulas to effectively get our result. So what result are we looking for first of all? Well, let's take a look at our data. Now, similar to the last example, I have a list of people who were invited to an event. And you can see all of those in the invitees column. I then have a list of all of the people who actually attended. So we had some no shows and my boss has basically asked me to compile a list of all of the people who didn't show up for the event so he can send them a very harsh email and we're going to use formulas to get our result. Now the first thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to put the invitees and the attendees into a table. So let's press Control T. Yes, my table has headers. Let's click on OK. So now when I'm working with my formulas, I'm going to be using table references as opposed to cell references. And you'll see what I mean if you're not sure in a moment. Now I'm going to use three formulas combined into one. So I'm kind of going to reverse engineer this, which will help you understand why we're doing what we're doing. Now the first formula I'm going to use here is I'm going to use the count if formula. Now the first argument here is the range. So I'm going to account the attendees range. Now notice when I click to select that column and I can do that because I have this data in a table, I get table references instead of cell references. So it says table one, which is the default name of this table, attendees, which is referring to the column that I've just selected. So that is our range and our criteria is going to be the invitees column. So let's close this off and see what we get. We get a whole bunch of ones and zeros. Now, why are we getting that? Well, what's happening here is it's looking at the first invitee, so George Mooney, and then it's looking for it in this list just here. And if it can find it, which it can in this case, because George Mooney exists in both of these lists, it's giving us a one. Now, remember, ones and zeros in Excel stand for true and false. So this first result is effectively true. George Mooney exists in both lists. The same for Bradley Mitts. There he is. The same for Tom Bruce. He exists in both lists as well. When we get to Julio Roberts, you can see if we look for Julio in this list, they don't exist. So that is why we have a zero there instead. So we have these results currently represented as ones and zeros, which isn't really what we want. Now, the first thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to change these ones and zeros into their true or false equivalents. Now to do this, I'm going to click in the first cell and we're going to go back up and edit this formula. And I'm going to add not into here. That's all we're going to do. We're going to close off the bracket and hit enter, and it's going to change these into trues or falses. But I've also switched it around because I've used a not. So now what we're basically saying to make this make sense is George Mooney isn't in both lists. Well, that is false because he exists in both. The same for Bradley Mitts, the same for Tom Bruce. If we get to Julio Roberts, Julio Roberts doesn't exist in both lists. Well, that is true. So that's kind of the way you need to think about it. So now that we have these true and false results, what we can do is we can use one of the newer functions in Excel, the filter function, to filter this list and show only the people who didn't show up. So let's go back to the first cell and edit our formula. And we're going to add filter in here. And we're going to filter the invitees. And we're just simply going to close off the bracket at the end. So now when we hit enter, we get a list of just the people who didn't show up. And if my boss wanted me to go a stage further and sort this list alphabetically, this is where I can use another one of the newer Excel functions. I can go back up and edit my formula and add a sort onto the beginning here. The default is to sort A to Z. So I'm not going to add anything else. Hit enter and I now have those results sorted alphabetically A to Z. And the cool thing about this is that if anything changes, the formula will automatically update. 
So if I was to take, for example, Reese with a fork, I'm just going to copy and paste her into attendees. She then gets removed from that no show list. So everything's dynamic and everything updates. So that is the first way that you can use formulas to compare two lists.